Are you not scared? Honestly, the, the true answer is no, I'm not scared. Why not? This is about justice. This is about doing what's right. And am I going to let a bunch of like soy latte drinking Newtown vegans scare me out of standing up for what's right? No. And if I did, then who am I? I'm like just as weak as them. I'm here today to bring you the story of Freya Leach, who I can only describe as a brave Australian Christian activist who's taking a stand for an issue that's obviously close to my heart, but she says matters so much that she is not cowering to the real life threats. So Never Again Is Now is an organization run by Christians uh, in partnership with the Jewish community uh, and a lot of Israelis uh, to basically stand against anti-Semitism, stand against the anti-Jewish hate and racism that has become normal on the streets of Sydney and around Australia. And we're Christians and we just believe that our Judeo-Christian values in Australia are something we have to protect. We have to stand up for them. We have to stand up for peace, tolerance and love. And we are seeing the exact opposite at a lot of these pro-Palestine marches. So a couple of things, firstly, as a Jew, yeah, that's heartwarming to hear, but why, like, why would you subject yourself to it now? I know I have no choice and my community, we have no choice. That's, I was born a Jew, I'm Israeli, I'm, I'm Australian. And so I have no choice but to defend myself. I mean, there are a couple things. Firstly, as a Christian, we owe so much of our faith to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are God's chosen people. It's very clear. You just have to read the Old Testament for that. God is the God of Israel. And we owe a debt to the Jewish people. And secondly, it's the right thing to do. You can't claim to be for justice and then walk past injustice. You are the standard you walk past. And so if Christians are silent on this, if Christians are silent when our Jewish community is being attacked, I question how Christian they really are. What would you say to Christians that are marching at those anti-Israel? I don't call them pro-Palestinian because they're often, they're not very pro-Palestinian. I think that if you're really pro-Palestinian, you would also want to get rid of Hamas. So these anti-Israel protests that we're seeing some Christians join, making the exact same argument you're making now, what would you respond to them? Well, I would say there are a lot of Christians with good intentions, but they've been fooled. They've been fooled by Iranian propaganda, by Hamas propaganda, and perhaps they don't understand the true history of Israel, why we need a Jewish state, why it is important that there is a place in the world where Jews are safe, and why, as you said, the best thing we can do for Palestinians is exactly what Israel is doing, is eradicating Hamas. Because as long as Hamas is empowering Gaza, there is no freedom, there is no opportunity to improve your lives. All these things that we stand for as Christians, as love, tolerance, justice, Hamas is the antithesis of all of that. So you've got to understand what's really going on here and you've got to resist just accepting the propaganda we see on social media. What, what would you say though to Christians who make all those same arguments the other way, they say, well, you're just falling for Israeli and well, we're seeing now that line between Israeli Zionist and Jewish is being blurred ever so often, even as far as the Greens now saying exactly how they feel. But what would you say to them that think you're the one that's deluded, you're the one that's falling for the propaganda and you're the one that's walking past the injustice to, you know, we're hearing numbers of 30,000, 10,000, Palestinian children killed by Israelis? Go to Israel. I went in July. We went into the West Bank. We went to Ramallah. We spoke with the presidential spokesman for Mahmoud Abbas. We saw, we spoke to people who lived in Gaza. We spoke to Palestinians. We spoke to Arab Israelis. We spoke to Christians. We spoke to Jews. Go to Israel, do some investigating and come to your own conclusions because you'll be welcomed. If you go to Israel and you genuinely want to figure out what is going on, people will not shy away from the truth because Israel has nothing to hide. They want to talk about the actions they're taking to protect civilians. They want to talk about uh, the equal rights that people have, the democracy, all that stuff. And then try going into, the, into Gaza. Try speaking to the leadership of Gaza about what they're doing to protect civilians. You'll get a very different response. You won't be allowed into Gaza, firstly. And, and the reality is that Hamas isn't protecting civilians. They want to maximize civilian casualties for their own cause. So I think 
It's just so obvious. Book a ticket to Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv and go see for yourself. Like, that's what I genuinely say. Now, looking at your name, it seemed familiar to me straight away because at the beginning of this conflict, there was a famous um, Anglican, what are they called? Pastors? Or Minister, ministers pastor. That was, I guess, mobbed in Sydney. Are you related? <laughs> yes, that's my father. We're a bit of a family of political activists. <laughs> so can you tell me about that? day yeah so basically what happened on october 9th two days after october 7th there was a big pro-palestine rally in the city uh really at that point the blood had not dried on the ground in israel there was still hamas terrorists running around it's shocking like it's not pro-palestine it was pro-hamas that's yeah. the reality well at that point you can't even argue because israel's offensive had not started yet. They had not even fired a single bullet back at Hamas at that point, And there were people taking to the streets to support these activities. So I, I saw this rally being advertised at Sydney University. There were posters up around campus. And I just like, I felt sick. I was like, how is this allowed? How are there people who I'm going to uni with supporting this right now? And so I was outraged. I sent this to my dad and was like, we've got to go. And he was like, are you crazy? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we we're like, okay, we're going. Um, we didn't know what, like, we didn't really know what we would do when we got there. We were just sort of like, we've got to be there. We arrive at town hall and we're, we're just sort of standing in the back, just observing what's going on. The kinds of stuff that they're saying from the front, just despicable. Then we heard a group of people on, in town hall square chanting, kill the Jews. F the Jews. At that point, my dad was like, I've had enough. He reaches into his backpack, grabs his Israeli flag and starts waving it. And he's in his Anglican dog collar, his clerical shirt. And he's just there on the steps of the cathedral, waving his Israeli flag in front of this mob of Hamas supporters. Then the whole crowd, I've never seen anything like it. They just all turn their heads and just start coming for him. So this group of men, and by the way, this crowd was overwhelmingly young men that looked like they were not there for the right reasons. So they turn their heads, start coming towards my dad. One of them goes like this to him, threatening to slit his throat. My dad, he hustles, like gets his stuff together and starts walking and then running up Bathurst Street and then onto George Street as this mob follows him, chasing him down, trying to catch him. He ends up having to run behind a police van to escape them. And then the mob is like standing there on George Street looking for him and the police have to disperse them. So he literally got mobbed as an Anglican minister standing on the steps of an Anglican cathedral in Sydney, two days after the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust, he was just waving an Israeli flag in solidarity with the innocent people that were killed in the face of a protest supporting terrorism. And he got mobbed, he got threatened uh, with, with the, getting his neck slit. Uh, and yeah, that was it, it was crazy. And the police did nothing. That same day is where uh, we've seen the footage where don't believe your eyes or your ears. They didn't say gas the Jews. Apparently they said uh, the Where's South Wales the police <laughs> made a, a, a thing of, of and, and crikey did a long, lengthy two month investigation with what happened to be two journalists who just have a history of hating on Israel. But they concluded that uh, it wasn't so anti-Semitic because they were only saying F the, they were saying, F the Jews, um, where's the Jews, not F the Jews, gas the Jews. Uh, you were there on the day. Firstly, do you believe that narrative? Look, I, I mean, does, you can just watch the footage. Like, I really don't understand how it's that. It doesn't matter even if it, even because I've, I've watched a few angles of it and I can see how in that footage specifically, and I understand that there were actually uh, witnesses that gave yeah, yeah. affidavits and statements to police who said that at some point they did hear the gas juice. But even if they didn't hear gas juice, doesn't matter. 
Yeah, it's fine. It's just F the Jews. What's the issue with that? And where's the Jews? Like, and where's the Jews? But this is the thing, right? Where's the Jews? Okay, oh, it's not quite as bad as gas the Jews. But what does that actually mean? Mm, I, like, I, I feel like in Nazi Germany, when the SS were kicking in doors, they weren't saying gas the Jews. They were saying, where's, where's the, the Jews? Jews? And you know what? On October 7, they found the Jews. Yeah. That's what happens. When these people go, where's the Jews? And they find the Jews. Just look at what happened on October 7. Going into homes, burning people alive in their cars, going into preschools, looking for children. Like that is what happens when where's the Jews is successful and you find the Jews. So anybody who thinks that where's the Jews is somehow better and there's no anti-Semitism. This is just Jewish people trying to play the victim, check yourself because you are probably the anti-Semite. Look at what happened on October 7. That is what happens when where's the Jews finds the Jews. What are you planning now? Well, honestly, seeing that, seeing how hateful, how just full of hate these people are for Jews, for Christians, for the West, for Israel, that's what made us go, we cannot be silent now. This is actually deeper and bigger than we thought it was. And so now on February 18th in Sydney, we're having a big rally event, Never Again Is Now. We've got Christian and Jewish speakers, and it's really about saying to Christians, especially, and ordinary Australians, you love Australia, you love tolerance, you love peace, you love cohesion. Well, we have to stand for it because right now there are people on our streets every single week at these pro pro Palestine protests that stand against all of those things and are challenging that. So it's time for Christians to step up and say we are with the Jewish community and we are standing against hate. And the problem, and this is the reality we have to grapple with, where were Christians during the Holocaust? You know, almost 100% of Nazi Germany considered themselves Christian, 70% Protestant, 30% Catholic. Where were they? There weren't enough standing up. And so we cannot repeat that. It's shameful. It is a shameful, shameful past the church has during the Holocaust. So now that we have the chance to stand up and to do what is right and actually live out our biblical values, we have to, it's an obligation on all Christians. So there's one in Sydney and you're, you're also taking it around the country? We're taking around the country. So we're planning one for Adelaide on March 3rd. And if you wanna get involved in helping us organize them in your city, reach out, go through our website, neveragainisnow.com.au. Follow us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, everything, uh, and, and get involved. You're a conservative Christian and I think through the Trump era, it was kind of popular for conservative Christians to stand with Israel. There has been this massive shift that I've witnessed within the conservative, especially on the fringes, but the fringe has kind of grown on both sides. But the fringe left have become mainstream. So the anti-Semitism there, we've all seen that. But we can't deny that on the right as well, the conservative Christian anti-Semitism that has kind of grown. Now, one of the arguments that they tend to make is how Israel treats the Christian community because of they see some videos of Christians in Jerusalem that are being treated badly at all. But it is often used by that growing after the Trump era where it no longer is called cool to stand with Israel on the right. They use that and they say, well, Israel treats Christians badly. Jews hate Christians. As somebody who went to Israel and who's somebody who, who I, I imagine understands the Middle East and, and the history and the reality for Christians in the Middle East, what would you answer to those Christians? I think that's wrong. That would be like saying Australians hate all Jews because on the steps of the Opera House, they were chanting, where's the Jews, F the Jews, gas the Jews. It's not true. There is a minority of people in Australia that do hate the Jewish people. The, ma the majority of us love them and want th to welcome and embrace them into our country. And we have over the last couple hundred years. I think it's the exact same thing with Israel. I have been so fortunate to meet some is amazing Israeli people, especially with running this Never Again Is Now event and the movement. We've got a lot of Israelis that are involved and they are beautiful, warm people. You can find, you can nitpick things about any country, any culture, but on the whole, Israel is an amazing country filled with beautiful people. And you cannot let 
uh, a few unfortunate incidences taint an entire country. And I think I would actually say that if you want to use that as an excuse to turn away from Israel, I think you're probably being quite anti-Semitic to say that those few people who were spitting on Christians mean that the entire country hates Christians and therefore we can never stand with them. It's like, that's not true. You'll find that people in Australia who believe anything. It doesn't mean all of Australia is like that. It's just lazy. It's lazy, lazy. So to so those people, just get over it and use your brain. I guess also looking at the Middle East, I was probably aiming to this point is, if you look at the Middle East, the only place in the Middle East where Christian, since 1948, where the Christian population has grown mm. is Israel. Yeah. Um, so you, you, can, you can say whatever you want about that minority of Jews that acted in, a, in an offensive way that's a minority, whereas the, the actual statistics in the Middle East, the numbers, mm. they speak for themselves. You, you, even, you know, I've seen, I've seen things where they use the minority Palestinian Christians to say, hey, this is not just, this, we Christians are also being, um, you know, slaughtered by the Israelis. So mm. in, in some way trying to boost that Christian base. But when you actually look at the facts, look at, you know, the West Bank, Bethlehem, I'm sure you've been mm, to Bethlehem. Yes. So Bethlehem in 1948, I think was about 80, 85% Christian. Do you know what it is today? 5%? I think it might be around 10. 10. So most of the Christian population has run, mm -hmm. is gone. And you can blame that on Israel as much as you want because that's often the narrative. Everything's blamed. So then explain to me Lebanon explain to me much of the Middle East, which has the same exact trend. Mm. Syria, it's gone from being 45% Christian to 3% Christian or something like that. The Christians have been persecuted across the Middle East now for the last, well, for a long time, but really over the last 50, 60 years, there's been a massive Christian wipeout across these countries. And those people that now want to turn on Israel, it's like, well, where were you when the Christians were getting slaughtered in Syria? Where were you when, where are you now when they're getting killed in, in Lebanon, in, you know, in certain Middle Eastern country and they're getting killed. So uh, when you cherry pick out just Israel, I really question whether you truly care about the Christians there or whether you're just trying to find a reason to hate Israel and hate Jewish people. One of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this and about this conflict is that Israel is actually destroying Hamas and that is good for the Palestinian people because there is no freedom in Gaza. You just have to compare the living standards between the West Bank to Gaza the West Bank is not perfect either, but it's not run by full on out and out jihadists, whereas Gaza is. And there's a big difference there. So to people who say that, it's like, no, because we love the Palestinian people, we need to get rid of Hamas. Their lives are also being destroyed by this. And you'll see a few brave Palestinians who speak out against Hamas. You can see the videos on social media and they're so brave because it's like North Korea in terms of its lack of personal freedoms so I just think no if you truly love Palestinians you will want to give them the freedom they deserve and that is freedom from Hamas again so people that want to find out the details of your upcoming events around mm -hmm. the country where is it never again is now .com .au. and why that name well after the Holocaust it, this was a classic um, sort of line, never again. And it was to say that never again will there be a genocide against Jewish people. And on October 7, we saw something approaching the levels of the Holocaust in terms of the evil, the brutality, uh, the, the killing of innocent civilians. And so now the call is never again is now. This is the time when we have to say, no, we are not gonna have a Holocaust 2.0. That's not happening. But, but now we have to stand up. And what would you say to people that, that might agree with you, but they, they argue, come on, we've seen these anti-Israel protests every single week, enough protests, let's just stop the protests altogether. 
call, telling you essentially to call off what you're doing as well? The reality is politicians listen to numbers. People on the streets actually matter. You just have to look at Labor's shifting in position on Israel from October 7 to now. Gradually over time, incrementally, as the public pressure has maintained, as you continue to see hundreds, if not thousands of people on the streets around Australia every week marching for Palestine, they have been moved. And so if we are to resist that, if we are to resist the hate, resist the anti Israel push that's going on in our society, we need to mobilize. And I think on the right as well, from a political perspective, conservatives tend to be really bad at protesting. Uh, and, and I think, I don't know why that is, maybe because the left is all about, you know, solidarity, workers' rights, they love a good protest. On the right, we don't really comprehend protests. And so we don't understand how they're so important. But the problem is, the pro-Palestine people do, and the politicians listen to numbers. This is why this is a Christian-led event. It's about getting people from outside the Jewish community to come on board and to stand against anti-Jewish hate, So partly so that politicians can actually realize that there is a constituency out there of people who do stand with the Jewish people, who do stand with Israel, and it's not just a Jewish problem. Anti-Semitism is not just a Jewish problem. It's everyone in Australia should care about this. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to broaden the scope of people who actually care so that we can mobilize and have more of an impact. Why is it not just a Jewish problem? It's not just a Jewish problem because anti-Semitism threatens what Australian actually stands for. It threatens our tolerance, our peace, our cohesion. It is anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish hate is a better way of saying it, is so un-Australian. It goes against all of our values as a country. And so to stand by and just watch this take over in our country is like standing by and watching people destroy our country. It's changing the character of who we are as a nation. And I think we should all be very concerned about that. Are you not scared? Of the, the I mean, pro putting a big You're putting a big target on your back by leading this. Look, I mean, like, no, honestly, the, the true answer is no, I'm not scared. Why not? I think most Jews are scared. Well, part, this is probably one of the advantages as a Christian. I just go, well, what's the worst they can do, right? Kill me? Okay, well, then I get to go be with Jesus. So whatever. Like, you really just go, well, like, seriously, what is the worst they can do? I don't know. I've experienced it all on social media, the death threats, in-person in harassment, verbal abuse, or physical harassment. And like, who cares? This is about justice. This is about doing what's right. And am I gonna let a bunch of like soy latte drinking Newtown vegans scare me out of standing up for what's right? No. And if I did, then who am I? I'm like just as weak as them. So I don't really care. I don't think, I mean, I understand why the Jewish community is scared, totally. Uh, Cause these people, some of them are really dangerous. Some of them are really dangerous, but I just go, well, that's why we're here. If you think Freya's story is important and what she's standing for matters, make sure to like, comment, but most importantly, share this far and wide to let people know what she's up to and to get behind her. And then head over to her website, neveragainisnow.com.au, get all the details for your local events and support her work. Neveragainisnow.com.au.